Hello everyone, welcome to Score High. I am Arshata Agarwal and our in our history optional lecture series, part 1 sub part C, we will be discussing in the heading sources of history, we will be discussing about the literary sources. Now there are under indigenous we have primary and secondary sources, we have poetry, scientific literature, literature in regional languages, religious literature. We will be discussing all these topics in depth. Now, first we have the Sanskrit literature which is under religious literature. So, the Brahminical sources disapprove of Gan Sanghas since they didn't perform the rituals and also did not subscribe to Brahminical rhetoric or observe the rules of Varnas. This disapproval is extended to towns in general, though Buddhist and Jain sources praise both. Now, the so, Brahminical sources were Gan Sanghas ko disapprove because they performed Brahminical rituals, they didn't believe what they said, they didn't believe what they said, they didn't believe what they said, they didn't believe The Sanskrit Buddhist literature of Mahayana tells us about the economic life and various occupations flourishing in the post-modern age. Manu was the famous Smriti in post-modern age. Yajnavalakya, Brihaspati, Narad, Katyanya, Nayana were famous in Gupta age. And Medatithi in post-Gupta age. These were the Sanskrit literatures famous. So, Manu was the famous Priti, who was post-modern age. Mein tha. Jashna, Valakya, Brihaspati, Narad, Katyayana, Gupta age, and Mudhatiti, post-Gupta age. Mein tha. So, these are important. You need to remember these. Now, about the Purana or epic literature. Now, epic literature is not history, but a way of lo looking at history. It reflects the norms of the generation looking at the history. So, epic literature basically क्या होता है वो आप कैसे history को देखते हो ये वो बताता है कि वो norms बताता है वो generation क्या follow करती थी rules. Now, the myth about Prithu, the first ruler clearing the forest and introducing civilization and cattle herding, reflects the early settlements and expansion of Aryans. The dichotomy between the kingdom settlement and the forest also reflects the tension between the settlements and the forest inhabitants. So, a myth that the first ruler was the forest clear and introduced the cultivation, cattle, and herd, and how the settlements and settlements and settlement Aryans expand. And this tells you that there is a way to say that there is a tension between the forest and the forest and the permanent settlement and the permanent settlement. Now, the story of flood has a connection with Hebrew legend which could have migrated to Mesopotamia and then Harappa. So, the flood that flood was destroyed is connected Hebrew legend that came from Mesopotamia and Harappa. Tha. Now, when the Puranas were finally compiled and revised, there were two lineages, Solar and Lunar, and all dynasties tried to claim descent from one of these. So, when the Purana was compiled, there were two lineages, one is solar and lunar. And her dynasty was going to claim that she was going to be a descendant. Now, we have discussed what is epic literature. Next is Vedic literature as a reflection. So, there was a racial de debate between Aryans versus Dasas, Dasyus and Panis. So, earlier it was held that they were different races. The hymn in Rig Veda about Aryan Varna and Dasa Varna is taken as a supporting device. Varna basically Varna ka kya matlab hota hai? Varna means skin color. Now, but more likely the color was used as a symbolic classifier to express the differences. Now, jo hymn, Rig Veda mein jo hymns hai, wo dikhate ki Aryan Varna aur Dasa Varna mein difference tha. Varna ka matlab skin color hota hai. To usse wo dikhate thai ki ye sab different races te. Now this is supported by a lower number of reference to the differences in skin color and higher number of references to the difference in language and rituals. 
तो ज़्यादा रेफरेंस था लैंग्वेज का और रिचुअल्स का द पानीज वर सेट टू बी द कैटल लिफ्टर्स तो पानीज क्या थे कैटल लिफ्टर्स एंड हैंस डिसलाइक्ड एंड हैंस डिसलाइक्ड एंड नॉट बिकॉज ऑफ एनी रेशियल कंसिडरेशन तो पानीज के साथ क्यों रेशियल डिबेट था क्योंकि वो उनको वो कैटल लिफ्टर्स थे और उनकी डिफरेंट लैंग्वेज और रिलीजन था इसलिए उनको लाइक like नहीं करते थे और उसमें रेशियल कंसिड्रेशन नहीं था ये ये सब एक हाइपोथेटिकल सिनारी है नाउ इन अवेस्टा दासा एंड दासू रेफर टू अदर पीपल इट वॉज ओनली लेटर दैट द टर्म टर्म दासा केम टू बी यूज फॉर सम वन डिसबॉर्डिनेट और एनस्लेव द लेटर डिक्लाइन इंडिकेट्स अ ट्रांजिशन टू एग्रीकल्चरल इकोनॉमी सिंस इन अ पैस्टरल इकोनॉमी स्लेव आर डिफिकल्ट टू कीप तो दासा पहले तो अवेस्टा में अदर पीपल सिग्निफाई करता था लेकिन बाद में वो सबॉर्डिनेट या जिनको अपने स्लेव बना लिया वो दिखाता था पर उनका धीरे धीरे वो डिक्लाइन हो गए क्योंकि एग्रीकल्चरल इकोनॉमी एक पास्टरल इकोनॉमी में आप उनको नहीं रख सकते उनको मेंटेन करना डिफिकल्ट होता है नॉट द रेफरेंस इंडिकेटिंग फ्लैट नोज मीन्स नो माउथ और पर्सन स्पीकिंग डिफरेंट लैंग्वेज सो देर वॉज अ रेफरेंस टू फ्लैट नोज नो इंटरक्शन बिटवीन द आर एंड द इन्हाबिटेंट्स नो द इन्हाबिटेंट्स वर सेटल्ड कम्युनिटीज वाइल आर एंड वर पैस्टर नो मैं आर एन इधर से उधर घूमते रहते थे इन सर्च फॉर पैस्टर द इंटरक्शन वॉज होस्टाइल एज वेल एज म्यूचुअली बेनिफिशियल एंड दिस वॉज नेचुरल तो इंटरक्शन जो इन दोनों के बीच में होता था होस्टाइल भी होता था कभी लड़ाई भी होती थी लड़ाई झगड़े भी होते थे पर ऐसा था कि दोनों एक दूसरे को म्यूचुअली बेनिफिट करते थे दस सम दासा चीफ्स are referred to as enemy and raiding their cattle was a justified occupation in rigveda now some chiefs of one over as they have been mentioned as patrons of vedic rituals some had trade relations and also that agriculturists allow pastoral cattle to graze in their fields after the harvest while it also provides nature to kuch dasa chiefs the kuch enemies the kuch patrons the vedic ritual ke aur kuch ke sath trade relations the Now this interaction can also be seen in terms of exchange of goods. Thus, we have many Dravidian elements creeping into Vedic Sanskrit and especially into later Vedas. So, in all these things, words exchange be also there because we can see Vedic Sanskrit in Dravidian elements. Now, secular literature first is Mahabhashya by Patanjali. This is important. It tells us about the Sunga period. Second, we have Mudra Rakshasa. by vishakha datta it tells us about the contemporary contemporary life of the time of chandragupta maurya of the time chandragupta maurya came to power to ye batata hai contemporary life jab chandragupta maurya power pe aaya tha this is chandragupta maurya next we have arthashastra this is very important it consists of 15 books five on internal administration eight on external relations and two miscellaneous it ranks artha superior to dharma and kama as the latter to follow from the follower to kehta tha jo arth hai wo dharma aur kaam ke superior hai the entire discussion of state craft is from the point of view of a would be ruler and is theoretical and normative कौन रूलर होएगा होएगा उसके हिसाब से था नॉट देर इज अ व्यू दैट इट वॉज कंपोज इन मॉरियन टाइम्स दिस इज बैक्ड बाई टू वर्सेज इन द टेक्स रेफरिंग टू कौटिल्या एंड नंदा तो एक व्यू है कि वो मॉरियन टाइम्स में कंपोज किया गया था क्योंकि दो वर्सेज है जो कौटिल्या और नंदा को रेफर करते हैं नॉ द आउटलाइन ऑफ एन इलेबरेट एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव सेटअप एंड जेनरेस कैश सैलरीज ऑफ ऑफिशियल्स इंडिकेट दैट द ऑथर हैड अ लार्ज एम्पायर इन माइंड जिस तरह से दिखाया गया कि एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव सेटअप बहुत बड़ा था और जनरस कैश में सैलरीज देते थे ऑफिशियल्स को ही दिखाता है कि ऑथर के दिमाग में बहुत लार्ज एम्पायर था नाउ बट देर इज ऑल्सो अ व्यू दैट इट वॉज कम्पोज नॉट कम्पोज इन मॉडर्न टाइम्स द प्रेजेंस ऑफ कौटिल्या नेम वुड मीन द व्यूज एज हेल्ड बाई कौटिल्या तो ये दिखाता है मतलब ये भी हो सकता है कि वो मॉडर्न टाइम पे नहीं था क्योंकि ये सब व्यूज है जो कौटिल्या के थे नो देर इज नो रेफरेंस टू कौटिल्या इन पतंजलि महाभाष्य बट महाभाष्य वॉज अ ग्रामर बुक रेफरिंग टू चंद्रगुप्त मौर्य कोट ओनली फॉर एग्जाम्पल 
तो महाभाषिक ग्रामर बुक थी जो रेफर करती थी चंद्रगुप्त मौर्य के कोट पे ही और तो कह सकते कि कौटिल्या उस टाइम पे नहीं था क्योंकि उसने पतंजलि के महाभाष्य में भी कोई रेफरेंस नहीं है देर इज नो रेफरेंस ऑफ कौटिल्या इन मेगस्थिनीज बट इज ओरिजिनल वर्क इज गॉन एंड वी हैव ओनली बिट्स एंड पीसेज इन रेफरेंस देर आर कॉन्ट्रोडिक्शंस बिटवीन द टू बुक्स और रेफरेंस भी नहीं है कौटिल्या का मेगस्थिनीज की बुक में बट अर्थशास्त्र वॉज ओनली अ थियोरिटिकल बुक ये सिर्फ एक थियोरिटिकल किताब थी ये बहुत चीजें डिफाइन करता है उस टाइम की फर्स्ट पॉलिटिक्स द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ स्टेट एज अ सप्तांग राज्य और हैविंग सेवन लिम्स किंग द सेवन लिम्स आर किंग ब्यूरोसी ट्रेजरी टेरिटरी आर्मी फॉरन रिलेशन एंड जस्टिस तो इसके हिसाब से स्टेट क्या था वो एक सप्तांग राज्य था एम्फोसाइज द किंग्स ड्यूटी इज टू सेफ गार्ड दर्न बेस्ड सोशल ऑर्डर एंड यूज द टर्म धर्म प्रवर्तक फॉर हिम तो किंग के लिए वो टर्म धर्म प्रवर्तक वो जो वर्ण बेस्ड सोशल ऑर्डर की रक्षा कर किंग मस्ट हैव सुप्रीम पावर नाउ अबाउट द इकोनॉमी it tells us that the state had extensive control over economy there were 27 adhyakshas or superintendents superintendents to regulate the economic activities the state had monopoly over multiple sectors including liquor pasture lands and manufacture of arms there was a detailed list of taxes which is given covering almost all economic activities there was importance of proper tax assessment which is emphasized upon which emphasized upon tax collection and tax storage to state ka bahut zyada control tha economy pe 27 adhyakshas the jo economic activity ko regulate karte the tax collect hota tha sari economic activities ke liye aur unka assessment bhi properly hota tha through collection or storage properly और स्टेट के मोनोपोली थी कई सेक्टर्स में जैसे लिकर के ऊपर पास्टर लैंड और आर्म्स मैन्युफैक्चर करने में नबोट द सोसाइटी इट बैंस रेनाउंसिएशन ऑफ ऑल वर्ल्डली लाइफ और वर्ल्डली लाइफ विदाउट प्रोवाइडिंग फॉर डिपेंडेंस इट टॉक्स अबाउट नाइन टाइप्स ऑफ स्लेव्स ऑन शूद्रास इट टेल्स अस दैट शूद्रास वर अलाउड टू एनलिस्ट इन द आर्मी वर्क इन एग्रीकल्चर एंड ओन प्रॉपर्टी the sacrosanct concept of marriage was broken in the group it allows for divorce under certain conditions to isme basically kya tha ki aap duniya mein jitne pleasure hai duniya ko usko chhod do aur apne dependents ke liye kuch mat chhodo no tarah ke slaves ki baat kar rahe hain chudras wo army mein join kar sakte the agriculture mein kaam kar sakte the aur property bhi own kar sakte the isse keh sakte ki unki situation thodi improve ho gayi thi aur jo concept of marriage tha wo to toota hua tha और डिवोर्स भी कुछ कंडीशंस में मिल सकता था देन वी हैव द पोस्ट मॉरन पीरियड नॉट द जूनागढ़ इंस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ रुद्र दमन वॉज अ साका इज इन संस्कृत इन फैक्ट फर्स्ट इंस्क्रिप्शन इन टायरली इन संस्कृत वाइल दैट ऑफ अशोका इज इन प्राकृत तो जूनागढ़ इंस्क्रिप्शन है जो रुद्र दमन का वो संस्कृत में और अशोका का प्राकृत में नॉट दिस कन्वेज द स्पिरिट ऑफ द हिस्टोरिकल चेंज where sanskrit was dom- increasingly dominating the elite circles an association with it was considered prestigious to ye dikhata hai ki sanskrit ka jo domination tha wo elite circles mein zyada tha now the inscription also is an early example of what wo- what was to become prashasti or eulogy eulogy to ye ek eulogy ban gaya tha कि जो भी किंग चाहता है किंग के बारे में सारी इंफॉर्मेशन नाउ मेनी इंस्क्रिप्शंस आल्सो टॉक अबाउट इन्वेस्टमेंट्स मेड बाय द किंग्स विद पर्टिकुलर गिल्ड्स लाइक साका नासिक इंस्क्रिप्शन किंग इन्वेस्टिंग इन द गिल्ड्स ऑफ वीवर्स पॉटर्स एक्सेट्रा तो साका नाका नासिक इंस्क्रिप्शन क्या दिखाता है कि किंग इन्वेस्ट करता था गिल्ड वीवर्स और पॉटर्स के नो दीज ऑक्यूपेशन वुड हैव बीन सोशली एक्सेप्टेड ऑल दो क्लेम्ड अदरवाइज बाई ब्राह्मणिकल लिटरेचर क्योंकि अगर किंग इन्वेस्ट कर रहे हैं मतलब वो सोशली एक्सेप्टेबल थे नेक्स्ट लिटरेचर इन द पोस्ट मॉडर्न पीरियड सांस्कृत काव्य स्टाइल डेवलप्ड अंडर रॉयल पैट्रोनिच 
The Junagadh inscription is the first example of long Sanskrit Kavya style inscription. This is important. Junagadh inscription is the first example of long Sanskrit Kavya style inscription. Now, Ashwaghosha was a famous Sanskrit Kavya poet and he lived in the court of Kushanas. He composed Saryutra Pakaran. Saryutra Prakaran, this is important. A story of conversion by Buddha, Buddha Charita, a biography of Buddha, and Sondrananda, which are fine specimens of Sanskrit Kavya. Now, there was another writer, Bhasha, who wrote Swapna Vasadattam, it, which is based on the court activities. Now, unlike Ashwagosha, who plays, whose plays were meant for a larger audience, so Ashwagosha ke plays were meant for a larger audience, his plays, that is Bhasha's plays were meant for the court audience only. So, this is the difference and that is very important. Now, the growth of Mahayana led to the composition of Buddhist Avadanas, Avadana literature. This genre included works like Mahavastu, Divya, Divyadana and was written in hybrid Sanskrit. Even the philosopher Nagarjuna chose to write in Sanskrit using it in Buddhist philosophy. Now this shows ascendancy of Sanskrit as the language of elite. Sanskrit Sanskrit elite ki language Next, literature in the Gupta period. First is about the cultural reflections. First we have Malvika, Malvikagni Mitra. It talks about Pushyamitra Sungas, Ashwamedha Yagna, his fight with Vidharba and the Indo-Greeks. Is, second is Kumar Sambhav. It reflects the growing Shiva Bhakti currents of the age. Kalidasa was himself a Shiva worshipper and his work shows many aspects of Shiva Bhakti. Third, it's Kama Sutra. It tells us that painting art form was studied in a systematic way. Four, the ornate style of writing developed in this period. He saja ke likhte the wo develop hua. To ye hai about the cultural reflections. In terms of the social reflections, we have the Sudraks Mrichachatikam. It deals with the lives of commoners. Its protagonist is a poor Brahmin. Different characters from different regions speak in their regional dialect here, which tells us about the society. There were different social classes present at that time. So, Sudra ka Mrich Chatikam, he is a commoner ke baare mein batata hai, aur iska protagonist, jo main character hai, wo ek poor Brahmin hai. Aur jo different character hai, wo different language se aur different region se aur different dialect bolte hai. The Kama Sutra tells us about the life of an urbanite who is well fed and well kept. Now, literature, primarily Smriti literature in early medieval age. First is the political history. There was theory of kingship. First, contemporary Smriti literature give unlimited power to the king. The king ke paas unlimited power thi. Unlimited power to the king, but yet place him in the bounds of religious and conventional norms. But wo bound the religious or conventional norms. Medati Smriti tells us that king gets his taxes in return for providing security to the taxpayers. He goes on to say that if he doesn't protect the poor, weak, and Brahmins, he will not achieve heavens. And also, he has to protect even those who don't pay taxes. But if he doesn't fulfill his duties despite getting taxes, he is liable to pay, face public discontent. So, though king ke paas unlimited powers thi. But king ko kyunki taxes mil rahe hai, usko apne taxpayers ko security provide karni hai, usko protect karna hai, jo garib hai, jo weak hai, brahmins ko, taaki usko heaven milo. Aur usko unko bhi protect karna hai, jo taxes pay nahi karte. Or agar king apni duty nahi fulfill karta hai, to us logo se discontent milega. Then we have Vishwaroop Smriti. It goes, on, goes one step further and says that it is legitimate for public to remove an exploitative king. But at the same time, there are other Smritis as well which talk of divine rights and or, or origins of king. 
तो विश्व रूप समिति क्या कहता है कि लेजिटिमेट है कि लोग एक एक्सप्लोइटेटिव किंग को हटाते हैं देन वी हैव द सोशल हिस्ट्री ऑन ब्राह्मण मिदाती स्मृति इट टेल्स फ्रीज ब्राह्मण फ्रॉम कॉर्पोरल पनिशमेंट एंड फाइन्स बट लिमिट्स दिस टू ओनली लर्नेड ब्राह्मण सिर्फ लर्नेड ब्राह्मण आर फ्री फ्रॉम कॉर्पोरल पनिशमेंट एंड फाइन्स दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट मत्स्य पुराण इट फ्रीज देम फ्रॉम कैपिटल पनिशमेंट बट एडवोकेट्स देयर एग्जाइल एंड ब्रांडिंग देन वी हैव विश्व रूप स्मृति देर इज नो हार्म इन गिविंग कैपिटल पनिशमेंट टू एन एक्सप्लोइटेटिव ब्राह्मण विश्व रूप स्मृति क्या कहता है कि कोई हार्म नहीं है अगर एक एक्सप्लोइटेटिव ब्राह्मण को कैपिटल पनिशमेंट दिया जाए द लिटरेचर ऑफ दिस एज बिगिन टू मेक डिस्टिंगशन इवन अमंग ब्राह्मण पर्टिकुलरली बेस्ड ऑन देयर रीजन दे होल्ड ब्राह्मण इन साउथ ओडिशा एंड आंध्र प्रदेश इन लो लाइट तो वो डिस्टिंगशन करने लगा था ब्राह्मण के बीच में भी नाउ ऑन क्षत्रिया लेस डाउन द यूजल ड्यूटीज ऑफ क्षत्रिया क्षत्रिया एंड राजपूत ऑन वैश्यास लेस डाउन द यूजल यूजल ड्यूटीज ऑफ द वैश्यास एंड द कायस्ट वर रिडिक्यूल्ड अबाउट द स्लेवस मेनली फॉर स्लेवस और मेनली फॉर डूइंग डर्टी हाउस होल्ड वर्क only though the buddhist literature also mentions their employment for agricultural work in some cases to jo ghar ke gande kaam the wo slaves karte the the temples and the mathas however used to employ the slaves in agriculture in a big way now the literature of this age also doesn't give any information about the property rights of the slaves and their freedom not even by working very hard and pleasing the master so it can be inferred that the condition of the slaves had definitely worsened from the previous period to so, koi uh, property rights slaves ke bare mein kuch nahi tha to so, unki condition ye keh sakte hai ki kharab hi ho gayi thi pura pichle period se now the master had full right over the life of the slave master ka pura right tha slave ki life ke upar then on shudras parashar and lagu vyasa smritis forbid any touch of food touched by the shudra ki ab shudra ko aapko chhuna bhi nahi hai aur koi bhi food jo na chahe usko bhi nahi midati advocates servitude of shudras but still allows them personal freedom he says some shudras used to study grammar midati kehte hai kuch shudras grammar padhte the paise to unko apne master ke niche hi kaam karna hai par unke paas thodi personal freedom hoti thi now on narad smriti narad smriti even advocates shudras to take up arms in emergency and defend but all these are exceptions only ab narad smriti thoda aur freedom deti ki wo arms carry kar sakte the emergency ke time pe aur apne aap ko defend kar sakte the but ye exceptional situations hai on untouchables many new classes and tribes were added to the untouchables and new disabilities imposed on marriage midati allows anulom higher caste male and lower caste female get married marriages as exceptions and says that the caste of the offspring will be that of the mother in such a marriage agar ek higher caste male aur ek lower caste female ki shaadi ho rahi hai to medati kehta hai ki jo offspring hoga use maa ka caste milega to wo ek lower caste hoga now the narad smriti it bans inter caste marriages and incest is prohibited on remarriage of women medati completely prohibits remarriage of women while narad parashar smriti allows remarriage in case of death abandonment missing husband they also allow niyog on feudal society with we find increasing references in the literature of this age to samantas their classification different types of homes for different samantas etc so there was an increasing feudal penetration in the age so feudal penetration badh raha tha now about the economics of that time kavya mimansa it tells us that timber industry was the main industry in the rashtrakuta kingdom then pepper was also exported pepper ko export kiya jata tha there is ample evidence in the smriti literature allowing brahmans to adopt 
ब्राह्मण्स टू अडॉप्ट ऑल्टरनेटिव ऑक्यूपेशन की स्मृति लिटरेचर में काफी एविडेंस है कि ब्राह्मण्स ऑल्टरनेटिव ऑक्यूपेशन अडॉप्ट कर सकते थे नॉ दस पराशर कॉल्स एग्रीकल्चर और नॉर्मल ऑक्यूपेशन ऑफ ब्राह्मण provided he himself didn't cultivate this also tells us that the land relations of the age land grants made to brahmans and prescribed various forms of concessions which should accompany such grants like tying the factors of production like labor and ox and plow with the grant then medati it tells us that south india was famous for its pulse this is important Agnipura mentions sword making and industry in Sopara. Now literature was written on agriculture, which is Krishi Parashar, sculpture, Shilpa Shastras, architecture, Vastu Shastras, veterinary sciences, horse and elephant, reflecting economic priorities. So this was all about the religious literature. We'll be meeting again in the next video with the regional literature. Thank you so much.